guys, thanks for joining us. Are you wondering what you can do to improve your ACT score last minute because you're taking the ACT soon? Or are you on a course studying for the ACT and just trying to be the most adept ACT guru that you can be? If so, we're gonna talk in this video about the number one mistake that I see students make on the ACT that is totally preventable in the English section. Before we get going, I want to remind everyone prepping for the ACT, we already have lots of awesome videos that could help you prep for the ACT, over 70 hours of videos, in fact, in our best ACT prep course ever. It's available exclusively at supertutortv.com, so go check it out. Subscribe to our mailing list if you're also prepping for the SAT and want to know when that is going to be released. It's looking like probably October of this year, so supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Go check that out, and let's get started here. Number one mistake I see students make is that they don't understand or they don't pay attention to question stems. Now, you might be asking, what's a question stem? Hmm, touche. Let's talk about that. A question stem, and this, by the way, this is just a practice test from 2005 to 2006 that was given away for free on the AZT website way back in the day. So I'm just using this as an example. If you haven't taken this test yet and you wanted to take it for practice, you can Google it. We have it on our resources page, actually, at supertutortv.com. We'll put that website address on the page here in case you want it, in case you want to take this whole test for fun because you want more practice. We have other free practice tests there as well, by the way. So number one here, you see how this has like a question like here? That's a question stem. Do you see how two through like five here are just answer choices? This is just answer choice, answer choice, answer choice. These do not have question stems. All that I mean by question stem is that there's an actual question because a lot of quote questions on the ACT don't have a question. They just have answers and you pick the best one, right? Huh. But what can happen is you get in this autopilot mode when you get on this test and you're like, okay, best answer, best answer. And you get in this mode of thinking, what sounds the best? What sounds the best, right? And you just keep plugging things into your sentences and you're at lightning speed and you're like, I'm going to crush this test and get into college. But then what happens is there's a question stem and you, oops, ignored it. And then you, oops, get the wrong answer. And you know why you get the wrong answer? Because a lot of these question stems have a very special word in them. And that very special word is the word not. Not, you need to pay attention to. Because it completely shifts what is right. Which of the following alternatives to the underlying portion would not be acceptable? That is totally different than choose the best answer. Do you see how it's the opposite? Ha, huh, yeah. So we can look at this really quickly if you want. And you can see kind of how it might go down if you didn't read that not. Number 10, last week some fellow passengers and I watched as an elderly man with a portable chessboard blank chess against himself. So what I might do here is eliminate this to get rid of my interstitial phrase here so that I can get my subject and my verb close to each other. I watched an elderly man, but here's subject verb. I watched an elderly man object playing chess against himself. That makes perfect sense. That's great. Who played chess against himself? That works. As he played, that works. Played. Does not work. And I watched an elderly man played chess. Super awkward. I watched an elderly man who was playing chess. With the who it works, right? But otherwise it makes an object a subject and that's really awkward and that's what H is doing. So I know H is wrong, but here's the catch. Had you not read the not and read this problem and thought F seems to sound pretty good, you probably would have just picked F and moved on and you might not even have read all the answer choices and you would have totally gotten this wrong. So don't be that person, okay? Let's look at one more that's a little bit different in character, and that's number 13 here. Which choice most effectively emphasizes the rapid speed of the train? Now here's what a lot of students do, and they might even read that, but then they go back here, they totally forget what that says, and then they just start plugging these in again, right? She tapped her foot as she reviewed what she'd written and then stopped tapping and jotted more notes as the train hurtled along. You might hear this and go, who the heck says hurtled along? That sounded awkward, ah! I don't like that, I don't like hurtled. You have continued on its way, and you're like, oh, that sounds more normal. Whew. Moved on down the tracks. Eh, that sounds kind of dorky, like something my grandma might say. Proceeded toward the next stop. That seems weirdly formal. Eh, so I'm going to pick B. You see what you might do? Because you didn't like hurdled, because you thought it sounded awkward, and you completely forgot about what it said up here? Ha ha. So what we have to figure out is what does it say? It says, emphasizes the rapid speed of the train. So I want it to seem super, really fast. So I'm gonna ask myself with each of these, which one feels really fast? Proceeded toward the next stop. That does not sound fast at all. It just sounds very like serviceable. Moved on down the tracks, maybe a little bit. Continued on its way. Nope, that doesn't sound fast. Hurtled along. I never use the verb hurtled, but then this gives me a moment to analyze it and say, does this emphasize rapid speed? Hurtled. 
huh, what's hurdling? I think that's like when you do the hurdles and like tracks, so you like run, 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 and you hurdle, you like, right? Maybe? Sounds kind of fast. I'd buy it. Moved on down the tracks. Move on down, right? Like I feel like this is like some sort of a blues song. We're moving on down, moving on up, right? Like, I don't know. But if you ask me, this sounds a little more dramatic. I know this wants dramatic, so I'm gonna pick A. But you see how you could have easily gotten this wrong if you ignored this and you just trusted your ears and thought what sounds right? Exactly. That can get you into big trouble. So don't be that person. Hug to this stem like it is your lifeline and you will be in good shape. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you apply this as you move into your ACT. Maybe you're taking it this weekend. If so, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we have lots of other tips, not just on the ACT and the SAT, but on college admissions. Check us out on Twitter and Facebook. We have social media in lots of different places. So follow us all over the place and I will keep you posted on the latest and greatest in the test prep and college admissions universes. And we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Good luck on your ACT if you're taking it this weekend.